Okay. So for this next topic, we're going to be talking about Chris Paddock and whether or not he's able to bounce back this year and, and really how he does that. So Isaac, let's lead off with you, man. Do you believe in a Chris Paddock bounce back season? Absolutely do. Um, He's probably going to be, I think, probably our number five guy in the rotation. So there's not as much pressure, whereas last year everyone was thinking he was going to be our number one. Um, but I think how he gets back to being maybe not the Chris Paddock we saw in his rookie season, but close to that is maintaining his velocity and trying to add a decent third pitch. Because at times throughout this past season, we'd see he's pumping 97 uh 96 and then come games i remember the game against the dodgers he was throwing like 92 and it's like that's a massive 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 difference you're like asking to get crushed if you're throwing 92 down the middle the way paddock does um but he needs just he just needs a pitch with more movement he needs to be able to add a third pitch to his arsenal so that way he's not throwing that fastball change up so much um because after two plate appearances maybe even after one these professional hitters are going to be able to crush that and we saw that many times throughout the season so uh maintaining his velocity throughout the whole season and uh adding another pitch is definitely going to be huge for him one sec i'll edit this out don't worry (laughs) okay i'm good now okay Okay, so I got an in- an interesting point to bring up because me and Ryan were talking about this a little bit before, but we were talking about how having the third pitch isn't as important as really creating a, a dominant fastball and throwing that dominant fastball and really just not, like like you said, not letting it hang over the middle because that's something that we've seen Chris Paddock do and really struggle in. But Ryan, I'll let you kind of talk about that because we were, we were literally just talking about this maybe an hour ago. The third pitch isn't the most important part of it, but it's really that fastball. So do you want to get into what you were kind of saying earlier? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not saying that it's not important because it's absolutely going to be important for him going forward to kind of develop that curveball and maybe his cutter, but but mainly the the curveball. And maybe I'll get into that a little more later. But that was more of a Chris Paddock taking a step up from 2019 type of thing. Right now he's taken, in my opinion, two steps back. And what he needs to do, first and foremost, in my opinion, is get back towards that 2019 form and have what was working for him then working for him now before he he focuses more on getting that curveball, landing it for strikes and stuff. But, you know, you look at guys like Denelson, Lamette, Tyler Glass now, Kyle Hendricks, Zach Davies. These are all guys who throw really just two quality pitches and have been successful in their careers through doing it. So what I think mainly happened with Chris Paddock last year, as opposed to 2019, was there was a huge problem with this fastball, as Isaac pointed out. And not only was the velocity extremely inconsistent, some days he'd be hitting 97, other days, I think it was against Oakland where his first pitch was 91, and it was just, you knew it was not going to be a good start. His location got really bad last year. And one thing I saw on Twitter that somebody pointed out was his arm angle changed a little bit he used to be kind of over the top he kind of went a little bit farther out towards a three four this season i think maybe they asked him to try to tinker with that because of uh him trying to improve his curveball and what you saw from him was his command on his fastball got really bad and if you look at his walk rate it doesn't really reflect that but what i noticed with him in 2019 he would get away with a lot of fastballs on the outside corner. They would be straight. They would be like, like BBs just straight on the outside corner. You get ahead of hitters. Then you go to the changeup. And last year he was getting more two seam spin on his fastball. So it was running a bit more to his arm side. And if, and I mean, he even pointed this out himself in a, in a press conference earlier this week. And let's say he's trying to throw that that same pitch that he threw so often in 2019 on that outside corner. If it's running towards his arm side, that pitch is going right down the middle. And if he's throwing on the outside corner to left-hander, he's going to miss. He's going to miss again. And knowing Chris Paddock, if he goes 2-0 to a hitter, that next pitch is going right down the middle because he doesn't like walking hitters. So 
For me, if I'm focusing on one thing he needs to improve on to take step forwards in 2021 after 2020, it's got to be the fastball command. He's got to learn to start getting ahead of pitchers more, con- sorry, hitters more consistently, being able to put himself in counts where he can bring out the changeup. And once he can find that again, then it's time to start working on the curveball. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And, I, and Chase, I remember, because we just have a group chat and we text throughout the games, you, you would have a lot of frustration in some of his starts where it's like, you're, you're like, the vo- velocity is all over the place. Like you were talking about the Oakland game where it's 91 and it's just so up and down. And, and really, sometimes you could tell right away, like, okay, he's going to struggle today. Um, so, so Chase, how does how does he get better at doing this? How does he improve that fastball? And, Ryan, you did talk about the, you know, getting the two-seam action, having it run a little bit more than, than he would want to. And, and you brought up also how he was talking about that. Um, I don't remember the exact quote, but it was basically along the lines of, I'm throwing a, instead of throwing a four-seam fastball, I'm throwing a, I'm partially throwing a four-seam and partially throwing a two-seam fastball, and it's just a mess. Uh, that's really what he was saying, but but Chase, how do you see him overcoming that that issue? Uh, well, he said himself he's going to start digging into the advanced matri- advanced metrics and saber metrics, and once he does that, you know he can take a deeper look into his mechanics, get his arm angle back so that it's more of a straight fastball, and then his command will come back because his command wasn't as bad as we're making it last year it was more just because of the two seam run in the ball was going where he wanted it to it's just that two seam run was bringing it in so once his fastball comes back to being flat i'm pretty sure his location will come back no problem and then his velocity will stay up too and then i think his vertical drop on his fastball increased and normally when you want high spin rate on your fastball so that it doesn't drop and that it stays more flat or that it looks like it's rising to hitters so that he can have success with his, you know, I'm going to throw this high fastball and you're not going to be a hit it. And then also set it with a tumbling changeup. And I wanted to see his cutter develop more than his curveball, just because that 12, six does not work. That's just my opinion. Didn't we didn't we talk about him th- potentially throwing a different styled curveball before Chase? Yeah, something more along the lines of like a what was it three to seven or three to six instead of something that's twelve six something that has just a little bit more tighter of a break and that he can throw faster, just because that long looping curveball is so different compared to everything else he throws that he just can from a mile away. Yeah, no, I mean that that does make sense, and I, I like that you guys bring up all the the different aspects of the fastball because he's ha- he has to locate it and he has to have a much more consistent fastball because the changeup like I, I think it was during his rookie year, and I, I don't know I don't know if I was talking about this with you Chase, but I know that a lot there was a lot of stuff talking about like all right how does he become a dominant ace with the changeup being that strikeout pitch because you have to be your location has to be spot on and that was kind of the questions i remember people bringing up during his rookie year now of course there are a lot of people that are like oh yep chris paddock is an ace look he's he's had a a few nice starts like let's get way too excited but there were some serious questions about like all right how can he do that how can he really turn into just a top end a top end pitcher with the changeup as that that punch out pitch so I, I think that if he can do the, the do a lot of the stuff with the fastball you guys were saying, that can go a long way. And then establishing either a cutter or a curveball as the the final piece of the puzzle for him, that can help him so much more. Um because you I mean you brought up Lamette. Lamette it's Lamette's shown like you can you can win with two pitches. Now it makes it a lot easier if you have three really nice pitches, but having those those two to really just piggyback on that's what i think is going to be a, a huge step for him and I, I hope he can do it i really hope he can um but i think this was yesterday's practice or yesterday's session from paddock uh this is from aj casavell paddock got some whiffs with his changeup. he completed four plate appearances and walked machado who's either a 0 for three or a one for three hosmer hit like a, a weak ball up the middle so potentially a single potentially not but for the most part, the changeup looked good. So hopefully we get some more reports like that from, from Paddock. I think there's definitely a chance 
Um, a bounce back season from him could that could be so massive for this team because if he's your fifth guy and he's pitching like a one, two, or three guy, I mean, that's that's exactly what you want out of this this rotation. If he goes out there and clearly wins the fifth job and then is producing like a one or two, I mean, that's that's what you want.